Hello and welcome to Rando Tech Info. So today we're talking about the LG Wing, LG's latest device that sports a very interesting and unique form factor. And I'm going to lay my cards on the table right now and share with you, I really, really like this device. I'm actually seriously considering picking one up. And the reason I am is because one, it's a lot cheaper than folding devices are right now. So the Z Fold 2, which just came out from Samsung, is a $2,000 device. This is a $1,000 device. Now I know you're sitting there thinking, well, they're very different. These are apples to oranges comparisons, and they are. The Wing is a much different device than the Z Fold. However, I actually like the form factor better than the Z Fold. And the reason why is like, for example, the Z Fold and other phones that flip out and, and open up with foldable screens that are like it, when it folds open, it becomes basically a square screen. Most apps and games aren't equipped to take advantage of that square screen. So you have a lot of extra real estate and some pretty huge black bars at the top and bottom of your screen. The Wing allows you to use your smartphone like a regular smartphone if you choose to. But if you want to use that secondary screen, you can. And it actually has a variety of different uses that LG has already shown off, including use as a gimbal and you can use it for dealing with your notifications so you don't have to mess with whatever's going on in your main screen. So like if you're watching a movie or a YouTube video, you can use the secondary screen to answer text messages or you can read your text messages that come in while you're gaming without having to interrupt your game. This is like the ultimate game space technology and I think it's really, really interesting. And kudos to LG for bringing this form factor to life. LG has been doing some pretty interesting stuff for a while now. The V50 and the V60 and the Velvet bring a lot of the benefits of folding screen technology down to a much lower price point. Yes, those aren't actually folding screens. There is a hinge in the middle, but still, to be able to get a lot of those benefits for seven, eight, nine hundred dollars instead of having to pay two thousand dollars for an actual folding screen is really interesting and i think the wing is their neatest idea yet so will this phone work on your u.s carrier network and unfortunately as of right now in october probably not it will work for you if you're on verizon and the reason it will work for you on verizon is as of right now in october of 2020 it's only being sold at verizon and if you go out to lg's website and even try to purchase the phone unlocked, you can't. There's just a link directing you to Verizon to purchase the phone. So you can go out there today, right now, and purchase the device. It'll work on all their 4G bands, all their 5G bands, including their millimeter wave 5G bands. So covered there. So what if you're on AT&T or T-Mobile? So the good news is, is the phone is supposed to be available later this fall for both of those carriers. So if you want the best coverage, on both of those carrier networks, you should probably wait and buy their version of the phone. But if you're impatient and you're able to get Verizon to unlock this phone right now, will it work on those carriers? Well, yes, but not particularly well. So if you're on AT&T, the good news is your 5G bands are covered. It uses all of AT&T's 5G frequency bands. 4G is a little bit more sketchy. It only uses four out of nine of AT&T's 4G frequency bands, and it's missing band 17. So your 4G coverage is probably going to be a bit sketchy. So unless you have really good 5G where you live, AT&T is probably a no-go with the current version of this device. Now, if you're on T-Mobile, you're going to get the exact opposite coverage that you would get on AT&T. So your 4G is covered. It uses five out of six of T-Mobile's 4G frequency bands and it uses all of their primary frequency bands. So your 4G coverage should be pretty good, but it uses none of T-Mobile's 5G frequency bands. So you won't get the low band 5G, you won't get the mid band 5G. So it's strictly on T-Mobile, this version of the phone, a 4G device. My final thoughts on this device are this. I think it's the neatest form factor to come out in a very long time and if you're a Verizon customer, I would be giving this phone a serious look. Now, I'm a T-Mobile customer. I'm seriously thinking about purchasing this device. I will not be purchasing it from Verizon. I will definitely wait for the T-Mobile version to come out. Yes, it stinks to have to wait for a couple of months potentially if you're an AT&T or T-Mobile customer, but I definitely think it's worth it. When you spend $1,000 for a phone or $900 for a phone, it might be cheaper on uh, AT&T or T-Mobile because it doesn't have the millimeter wave antennas in it. When you're spending that kind of money, I feel like you're going to want to get the best device possible, which means you're going to want the best coverage possible. So be patient, wait it out, 
get the version that is made for your carrier and I think you will definitely be better off in the long run. Also, let me know if you are interested in purchasing this phone despite whatever carrier you're on and let me know down in the comments why you're interested and if you think this form factor does have potential moving forward. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and until next time, this is Rando Tech Info signing out.